Hello. My name's Melanie. But you might know me as George. Welcome to my channel. I can't keep that up. Cause I got the pill. I'm just having a bad hair day, okay? Today we're going to carry on looking at the RM40. Before I do the full recap, what I wanted to show you was how I'm going to get round the fact that this capacitor here, which was the original, is going to be replaced with this capacitor here. There's a slight size difference and this won't fit in the holder that the other one came from. So what I want to do is I want to fit this on the board. Now the trouble is there's this tropical fish capacitor in the way and the way we're going to get round that is by taking that capacitor out and putting it underneath. So let me show you what I mean. The soldering iron's warmed up. Let me get me sucker because I need me sucker. It's always good to have a sucker. Let's turn the chassis over. I didn't disconnect the mains transformer as you can quite obviously see. I'm just going to turn that over there like that. Put that down there like that. And the first thing I need to take out is the two wires. Now these come from... I'm going to turn it back over again for a moment. These come from... Let's move... Get out the way. <sighs> You know, you can get really frustrated with these things. It's terrible. These two wires come through here. What I'd do is if I get a little sharpie, I'm going to just dab a spot to indicate the black so that I don't get that wrong. Let's take out those two wires. So we turn it back over again. That one goes to there. So I'm just going to hang on to the two wires. Um, it's probably easier, in fact, not to use the sucker, but to just simply give it a tug, because there's nothing like giving it a good tug. So that's those two out. Let's just clean out the holes so that I can stick the other capacitor in. So they will go across from there to there. Now this is the tropical fish capacitor here. So we can drop that one out now as well. Let's just get up under there with my fingers. Give it a little wiggle like so. And there's the capacitor that we're taking out. Now those aren't polarised, so we don't have to worry about that. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this one. I'm just going to straighten that leg a little bit. I'm going to put this one in through the holes. Now it will go to this hole and this hole here. So anywhere along this line is, is actually going to be fine. So we'll uh, put that in. Now, we know that this is the negative side, so let's get negative side. And the positive side is over there. Like that. And let's just fit that in nice and snug. Glue that one in. Let's just look at the joints, yes, nice and nice. Snip the ends off. And then we're left with the tropical fish, which has to go back in to these holes here. Now, as you see, it's designed to fit into a number of holes. But what we shall do is we shall just tip it over slightly so that it stays level, or below the level of this, actually. So we'll just tip it over slightly. And we can then... Helps if you don't move it when you solder it. Just solder it in like that. And as you see, that is in. It's not going anywhere. It's in exactly the same place. But now, if I turn it this way around so that I don't break all the wires, you can now see that this capacitor is in. I haven't got floating wires. And that makes it fairly straightforward. So all I've got to do now is 
recap the rest of the radio. I'm going to obviously start with these bigger ones and just fit some replacements. You don't want to watch me solder the rest of this, so I'm going to come back when all of the recap is done. So we'll see you shortly. Hopefully, things will be back to normal. But you never know. It's working. And I'm going to turn that down for now. Just enough so that I can hear it, so I know when the next part of the voice is speaking. Now, it's on medium wave, and it's still picking up a signal, even though there's no ferrite in the coil. Now, this is the long wave one. This is the medium wave one. And just the inductance of my hand... ...is enough to bring it into audible level. But... While we've got the set apart, there are a couple of tests it wants us to do. And the first one is to set the voltage on the amplifier. Note, output stage and VHF U tuning adjustments must be checked before the RF alignment. So we're not actually doing the RF alignment first, we're doing the output stage and tuning adjustments. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to... Audio amplifier adjustment, adjust R51, which is this part here, to get, let's move to the next page, 10.5 volt between the junction of R56 and C48. Now, I could go through, oh yeah, you look through this and, you know, this is C48 and R5, R, blah, 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 R56 is down here. So what we need to do is measure between the positive of this capacitor and the chassis. So I'm going to bring the multimeter into shot, make sure that you can see it. And we're going to put the probe in there just to rest nicely. I'm going to get a tiny little adjuster tool out of my wonderful kit of adjuster tools. Well, not so tiny, actually, because it's a, a trimmer. Dropping things all over the floor. Do you like the ponytail? It's all curly. I like it. Um, <laughs> right, so we're going to put this onto the positive of this cap. We're currently measuring 10.4445. So we need to adjust this one. Of course, I'm turning this, but the end of the tool isn't turning. That one's knackered then, isn't it? Let's get my good old standby RS components one. The one I've had for too many years. Right, so that goes in there. It goes on there. We've got... Right, so that's the wrong way. Ten point nine nine ten. I'm just going to give the pot a quick multi twiddle there so that I can get it dead on like that. Um, obviously, the pot hasn't been moved for so long, and the track's got some sort of dirt on it. But now I've just you know, given it that twiddle. 10.5 volts exactly, so that's good. Hey, we're getting there, aren't we? Then we've got to do the quiescent current, so we've got to do TR9 collector in series. So the collector on TR9. TR9 is this big transistor at the back, if I just find the diagram again. TR9 will be here. So the collector of TR9, TR9, R60, R62, R63, there we are, it's there. C48 goes through R61, R63, 
R61, R63, then comes out to the collector of TR9. So it's this red wire here is the collector. So we've got to put a meter in series. So the first thing I need to do is get my little pliers and disconnect that transistor, being careful because that is a mains cable still. I might rest that under there for the moment so that it doesn't get in the way. So there's the red wire off. So I need to clip one section of clip lead to there. The Book of Lies says to connect a 25 milliamp meter in series with TR9 collector and adjust R58 for 15 milliamps through the meter. Allow one minute to check for drift at 20 degrees centigrade for this adjustment. Now, the room in here is, if I look over there, around about 20 degrees in here. It's quite warm. The pot we need to adjust is this one. Now, there is no noise because we're on the auxiliary input section, which means that there's no signal. It's just the base current to the transistors. We don't want a signal at this point because that will affect our current readings. We've got to adjust this until this meter reads 15. Now, checking this, this is all quite low. It's biased very cold at 8.3. So let's just take this up slowly to 15 milliamps, 15.05, 15.06. Just going to give it a gnat down. There we go. 15 milliamps exactly. And it says to leave that for a minute. So I would say that's about a minute now. And it's settled down, it's dropped down now to 14.4, 14.8. So I'm just going to give it another little tweak. Take it back up. Not too far. Come on, down you come. Back to there. That's sitting there quite stable, not a problem. So then what does it say? Um, stick a, an oscilloscope across the loudspeaker, feed in a one kilohertz sine wave pin three socket two, and press the aux button. Slowly increase signal generator until clipping of the output waveform is observed. Adjust R51, which is the first one we adjusted for symmetrical clipping. We're set up now to do this next measurement, which is the output stage dynamic balance. We have a oscilloscope lead connected across the loudspeaker going to the oscilloscope screen, which you can see there. We have this lead coming in here from my signal generator. The instructions are to turn the volume control to maximum. Shove in a signal. Increase the signal generator until clipping of the output is observed. So we've got to start bumping this up. Let's just bring the volts divisions down. And it's about there, but it's blooming loud. Now we've got to adjust R51, this one, until the clipping matches.
these poor output transistors and my poor ears. That is now set up and it's balanced and it's ready to do any RF modifications. Now I think this video is long enough and I think we're going to say that's about it. Thanks very much for watching. Go and watch the last part if you haven't seen it. That'll appear up here, I think. Yes. If not, it'll appear up here. It'll appear somewhere on the screen. Otherwise, YouTube will tube some tube. YouTube will tube 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 tube. Otherwise, YouTube will choose something for you, and that should be either down there or down there, depending on which way round I'm facing. Probably backwards, knowing me. And then you'll have all the wonderful things with my ugly face if you haven't subscribed. Don't forget, like button. Hit the bell if you do subscribe, if you haven't already. And enjoy yourselves. Bye! But I think I'd rather be Melanie.